Hello everyone, it's uh, Professor Rako. Today we're continuing on with our earnings per share chapter. Uh, the video today deals with stock warrants. Okay, so warrants are certificates entitling the holder to acquire shares of stock. And here's the important part, at a certain price within a stated period. Okay, meaning the warrant means they still have to buy it. Okay, they can't turn the warrant in and exchange it. So it's not like a convertible uh, that we looked at in convertible bonds and convertible preferred stock. They actually have to pay for it. So we'll see cash changing hands here. But it still has a dilutive effect on EPS because the end result is that we'll be issuing shares when they buy it, which will increase uh, common stock outstanding, which in turn uh, lowers earnings per share. All right, so let's go. We're going to look at a couple examples here. One stock issued with other stock. And then stock if it was attached to something like a bond. Okay, so we've got a company. They sell one share of stock with a detachable stock warrant for $25. Okay, so that is the price of both together. Okay, they're selling the warrant and the stock together for $25. All right, the warrant gives the holder the right to buy one share in the next five years for $28. Okay, so that is the exercise price. Okay, the strike price, you might hear it called, or exercise price. The price of the stock the day before the sale was 21, suggesting a price for the warrant was four. Meaning if we have a $25 sales price and the stock is 21, then the warrant uh, we can uh, assume has a fair market value of four. All right. After one month, the, uh, whoever holds the warrant exercises it when the stock was selling for 40. Uh, what that means is they can buy it from us for 28 and they could turn around and sell it for 40 and make the $12 profit there if they so choose to do so. All right, assuming the par value of the stock is 10, record all entries. All right, so first we want to do the issue of the warrants or the issue or the sale of the warrant. Now remember, it is we have two separate securities here. All right, we've got the warrant and the common stock. All right, just imagine that they're stapled. They're two pieces of paper and they're stapled together, and that's what we're selling for $25. All right, so meaning we have a debit to cash for $25. All right. Now, remember, we are issuing common stock, and common stock always goes on at par value. That has not changed, okay? However, it says up in the problem that we're allocating $21 to the common stock, all right? So the rest goes to additional paid in capital. So there's our 21. All right, our stock warrants account, we call that paid in capital stock warrant. So it's an equity account. That's why it's a normal credit balance. So that goes on the books at $4, all right, the value of the warrant. All right, when they exercise the warrants, all right, okay, think about what's happening here. When they exercise the warrant, they are bringing the warrant to us along with $28 cash, okay, because that's the exercise price. So we are getting $28, and we are taking off paid in capital stock warrants off the books, okay? So that debit right there makes it uh, that account zero, all right, which is what we want. Now they're so they gave us $28 in the warrant. Now they're sitting there waiting on their share of stock. Okay, so we give them their common stock, remember, which goes on the books at par value. And then everything else goes to additional paid in capital common stock, which would be 22. All right, and so that's the journal entry to exercise stock warrants. All right, now what if it's issued with something like a bond? Okay, so once again, we still have two separate instruments, all right, a bond and a warrant. So we're going to allocate the total selling price between the two using one of the following. So over here on the next page, we'll see the proportional. And if you look down here, we have the incremental method. This should be uh, remind you of what we did in the equity chapter when we did both the proportional and uh, incremental method when we had preferred and common stock being issued together for one lump sum. So this will be a similar approach, uh, except we're dealing with a bond uh, and a warrant. All right, so let's go through it here. So we've got a company. They issue 209% $1,000 bonds at 105. Remember, anytime you see the wording like 105 or 98, it just means percent of par value, of face value. So that means they were issued at a 5% premium, 105% of face value. Attached to each bond is one detachable warrant entitling the holder to purchase 10 shares of $10 par common stock at $99 per share. All right. On the day that these were issued, the market value of the bonds uh, without the warrants was 99 and the market value of each warrant was 40. All right. So we're going to calculate the issue price. So this sentence right here, from here down to here, that tells us the market value of each. Remember, to do the proportional method, we have to know the market value of each one. 
Okay, so let's first come down here and let's just calculate the issue price. All right, what are we going to issue these for? Okay, remember it says we are selling two hundred one thousand dollar bonds. All right, so that's two hundred thousand total. But it tells it when we issue them with the warrants, we're able to sell it at one hundred and five percent of face value. So the lump sum is two hundred and ten thousand. All right, so that's the amount we're going to allocate. So let's do the fair market value of the bonds. All right, and the fair market value of the warrants. So the fair market value of the bonds, it tells us if they were sold separately, they would sold at 99 or a 1% discount. Okay, so that's 198000 All right, so that's the market value of those. And it says for the bond warrants, they're $40 each. So we have 200 bonds. Each one's attached uh, to a warrant that is valued at $40. Okay, so that is $8,000. All right, so our total fair market value here is $206,000. All right, so remember, when we're doing the proportional method, we take each one and look at what proportion of the total fair market value does each one represent, meaning bonds are 198 of the 206000 all right, and that gives us a proportion, and then we're going to multiply that times the lump sum, 210000 So this is real similar to what we did in the equity chapter, so if you have any trouble, you can go back and look at that as well. All right, so that means we're going to allocate 201845 to the uh, bonds, and then to the warrants, they represent 8000 of the 206000 Multiply that times the lump sum that we're receiving, and we're going to allocate eighty-one fifty-five to the warrants. All right. So I always like to do a quick check. We're trying to allocate two hundred ten thousand. Just make sure that you are indeed allocating two hundred ten thousand. All right. So my journal entry here to put them on the books now. To for the, now this is for the issue. So if we look on the previous page, this will be the issue slash sale journal entry. All right. So we're getting cash. All right, we're getting cash for two hundred ten thousand. All right, we're putting bonds payable on the books. Remember, bonds always go on uh, at face value. Okay. However, if you look up here, remember we're allocating two hundred one eight forty five to that. So we need another eighteen forty five allocated to the bonds, and that's going to be premium on bonds payable. All right, and then we're going to have the rest go into stock warrants, paid in capital stock warrants. All right, for the 8155. And that would be our journal entry. Now, when they are exercised, assuming they're exercised, it would be the same journal entry as we looked at on the previous page, meaning they would bring us the warrants and the $90 per warrant. We'd issue them stock and then clean it up uh, with additional paid in capital or retained earnings, depending on what we needed. All right, incremental method is just when we don't know, uh, we only know one of the fair market values. All right, so it's assumed the fair market value of the bonds in the previous example could not be determined, but the fair market value of the warrants is still 8000 So if we look up here, remember we did the fair market value of the warrants uh, up here was 8000 So we're saying we know that number, we still know that number, okay? So we, if that's all we know, that's all we can use, meaning, all right, we'll take the uh, lump sum, of 210,000 minus the fair market value of the warrants, which is 8,000. And then we'll allocate to the bonds, everything else. So not quite as exact as the previous numbers, but if we only know one fair market value, that's all we know. So that's all we have to go on. All right, so I'm not gonna write out the journal entry again, but it's gonna be this same journal entry up here, all right? The, uh, if you think about it, the lump sum's the same. That goes on at face value. This 1845 would now be 2000 because we're allocating 202 to the bonds, and the 8155 would be 8000. Okay, so that's all that would change. All right, so this is warrants, stock warrants. Remember, they're just like a separate item attached to a, another stock or a bond. Uh, and then that uh, basically, when it exercises, it just means they're turning the warrant in. It gives them the right to buy stock at a certain price. Uh, and by doing so, we issue them common stock. And that's why it has a dilutive effect on earnings per share. Okay, so it's just another dilutive security. And this is how we do the actual accounting for it.
All right, so stay tuned for the next time. We'll continue rolling through these dilutive securities before we get to earnings per share. Hope you're enjoying it. Uh, please, you know, subscribe to the channel. Uh, you know, tell your friends about it. Hopefully it'll help them come test time as well. All right, take care. We'll see you next time.